Well, good day, everyone. Welcome back to the channel. All right, on a part three of my little butcher's knife build, um, after putting the maker's mark on, I've just polished off the blade over the maker's mark, um, just using the cork belt at 600 grit. And now it's time for us to make our bolster. So let's get on with that. Bob's back out with me again, trying to find fairy mice. So to start with, we're just gonna use a knife, mark out our bolster material. As you can see, I got a fair bit of leftover on there. I'd rather have too much material than not enough. So we'll just square that up. And a little wider than that. So, measure to my normal exacting standards. And now we'll take it across the bandsaw and cut it. Unlike when I'm drawing the holes in the blade, at this stage I will hold it in a vise because I want it to hold perfectly still. Um, and yeah, the vise just helps a lot with that. So just got to line everything up, make sure we've got that extra material hanging out. Make sure we're lined up so we can cut the bevel on the front here and still be clear of the pins. Get everything in the right position. Once we've got the first hole started, put the second piece underneath. Get it down actually sitting down tight to the vise. The hole is sitting off this channel. So I can drill through the two of them with no stress about it. Brass band, a copper alloy. It's still a wee bit grabby, uh, but it's nowhere near as grabby as copper itself. Copper itself can really bind up the drill bit. For the pins, I've just used some uh, eighth inch pin stock just cut it a wee bit above the jaws of the vise once we cut two while I'm there and using the grinder I just put a little chamfer on the end of them just makes it easier for it to go in the holes Got a little bit of separation there. Looks worse on the camera than it is actually. So just pull it apart. A little bit of bulge out, so I'll just flatten that off. Okay, once that's flat, they're back together. Just get our pins in. Pin it back up the top. Knife back on. Alright, once we've got that hole marked, we'll drop it down again. This time the piece is big enough to bridge over the hole. We'll clean up all our drill holes just on the flat of the grinder. Okay, we're making sure we put them back together the way they come apart. Put a knife on. Now I want to clean up most of this excess material down here. It's going to be really hard to grind out later. That there's less of a problem, but I will tidy it a bit. The same with the top, less of a problem. But I'll tidy it up a bit.
We are roughly to shape. Um, as I said, I'll leave a little bit just in case there's some wiggle as I set the pins. Um, and that just means I've got some material to play with. Uh, lots of quenching as you're doing it. Brass isn't as bad as copper. Copper will hold some heat, something fierce um, and needs lots of quenching as you're working it. All right, we're up to the point where we take the knife off. You just want to make sure your grinder is nice and square to the work rest when you do this one. It's just going to save any gaps in your glue up. I'll change over to this one, which is actually an angled tool rest when I'm doing the bevel on the front edge. You can see here, there's an arm to adjust it, um, but I pretty much set the angle where I like my bevel on the front edge to be and just leave it there. And just put it down against there. As you can see, big gap at the top, touching at the bottom, and that'll cut our angle on. Through. There we go, just finished up on the cork belt, which gives it a nice satin polish finish. Um, once it's all together, you cannot get to this part to refine it anymore. So you need to be finished before you put it all together. In saying that, let's go do it. Brass work hardens, so you want to heat it up past critical which is a just under a dull red and that will anneal it back down you can quench it uh, it doesn't really matter if you do or you don't you just want to put the heat into it there we go that looks just at that dull red if you don't do this step when you go to clean them over they will chip brass still can. It's a lot more chippy than copper. There we go. Still can chip, um, but heating it up is going to avoid a lot of the chipping. Also, making sure you don't have too much sticking through so you're only working on a small amount of me metal. Make sure it's all lined up. need to drive it in be very gentle with it because you have just softened it and the piece that I drove that's the piece I'm going to cut off because there's too much there thought it was set to go so we just put it on the vice uh, put it on the anvil and give it some nice firm hits Flip it over, firm hits on this side. Okay, once it's set, it's all nice and tight against the blade. Everything's looking good. And now we'll give it a bit more curry. All right, there's people who talk about tapering their holes and that sort of thing. I don't. Um, you know, I only do the straight hole and then once I drive it, it's going to expand the metal and it's going to fill that hole totally. You know, I've never had anyone manage to get a bolster off. You know, it's just not really a problem. All right, from here, time to go to the handle. So the same as I'm particular about the steel that I use on my knives. I like the carbon. Um, I like the bra brass. I also like to use this wood, uh, which is out of uh, my church. Um, we've done some renovations there, took some wood panelling down. This is that wood panelling. Um, it's not a cheap wood, it's a uh, Tasmanian myrtle. Uh, so it's a lovely piece of wood. 
hasn't got all the figure or a fancy grain that I use uh, generally when I make a Cussman knife. It's not stabilised, you know, but it also doesn't cost me 50 bucks. And it's got a little piece of the church. Uh, made a knife for a bunch of volunteers with the wood from it. Um, and that way they got to keep a little piece of the church for themselves. So, we just got to clean it up ready to use. Make sure we're nice and square because I've changed plat I've changed work rests a couple times. So we just want to make sure it's nice and square. Okay, that's square and cleaned up. Now I've cleaned up the faces with a planer. Uh, that's not it's not clean enough for what I like for glue up, so we'll clean those up on the grinder as well. Glue up stage, first thing we're going to do is a bit of rubbing alcohol. Just make sure all our surfaces are clean. As I've shown in a couple other videos, I do a three day glue up on my knives. Uh, I just find it keeps all the joints nice and tight. Uh, whereas if I try and just rush it and do it in one hit, you end up fighting open joints and it doesn't look great. This awesome G Flex glue, which I happen to have a link for down in the description. I find this stuff pretty good and it's one to one, so it's nice and easy to mix it. Okay, we get all our clamps ready. Put one in, ready to go. Um, I find the Clico clamps work great on this, gluing this first side. Unfortunately, they're not wide enough generally to get both sides, but for the first side, they work fantastic. Some glue in the bolster. The good thing about doing a bolster knife is it doesn't matter about squeeze out, it's not going to get on the blade. So, plenty of glue is not a bad thing. First piece on. Okay, let's make sure everything's nice and tight, no gaps. Don't mind the running dog. Well, there we go. Now the next step is, once this sets up, it is a 24 hour curing glue, so it takes 24 hours to get to a full hardness. If I've got time in the morning before I go to the office, I will have a chance to uh, drill out these holes and glue the second step. Um, so if I can, I'll do that. Chances are, because I always wake up late, I won't get a chance to do that and I'll do it after work. But if I can do that, then I can do the pins in the evening and save myself a day. Otherwise it's gonna take three days. Day two, 
Didn't get a chance to do it this morning, but gone out this evening, drilled the holes through the first piece, rough cut at the shape, you see like that, why well, it's called a bird's beak. It's less obvious that way. Um, everything's wiped down with the alcohol, glue mixed up. Yeah, plenty of glue on there. Put our timber on. Make sure it's all nice and tight. Clamp it up. Now. I deliberately use one clamp shorter than the other so it leans down on an angle that way if there's any squeeze out which there will be because I'll put plenty of glue on that it's going to move away from the blade all right tomorrow we'll do the pins last stage of our glue up is putting our pins in I just use a piece of quarter inch rod in this case brass Bit of that glue in the hole. I'll do that from both sides. And then I just roll the pin in the glue. Make sure it's got a good coat. And I just pop that in, push it through. Then I give it a bit of a jiggle backwards and forwards. Just make sure the glue's filled any cavities in there. And we just leave that set for 24 hours and tomorrow we can shape the handle. Um, tomorrow's Wednesday and I need to get this finished by Thursday night because I'll be traveling on Friday. So running close, but should get there.